rise to offer my contribution to the debate on budget 2022. From the outset, let me say that the minister, that the senior minister with responsibility for finance in the office of the president, Dr. Ashley Singh, did an excellent job in putting together this budget, which paved the way for the continued development and transformation of our country this year. Mr. Speaker, it would be remiss of me if I did not also recognize the diligent work of the staff and all the technical personnel who also contributed to the creation of this masterpiece of the National Fiscal Plan for the year 2022. It was a commendable job, despite the duplicitous rhetoric from the deceptive APNU AFC opposition, whose bellicose diatribe is laced with sanctimonious utterances of praises for the totally self-serving leadership style that sent this country's socioeconomic paradigm plummeting into devastation and near bankruptcy. It is public knowledge, Mr. Speaker, that the Visionless Coalition Administration did absolutely nothing for the people of the country in the five years they had control of the government. Instead, they were like a demolition, a demolition gang wrecking all the previous PPPC government had built, including some economy that they had inherited. Their few accomplishments with the continuation of projects for which the PPPC government had laid the groundwork, created the framework, and accessed the funding. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, they restructured the PPPC's visionary conceptualization that brought less benefit to the nation at the significantly higher cost, such as the upgrade of the Chedi Jagan International Airport and one cannot help but wonder what went under the table. And I speak directly to the Honorable Patterson. Mr. Speaker, they did not realize a single promise they made to the people during those five hard years when they drove the na this nation to its figurative knees. Instead, months into their term of office, the sign of a government struggling to find its footing was highly visible for all to see. From misappropriation of the people's wealth for personal enrichment and aggrandizement of building white elephants, such as the Durban Park, their legacy was an inexorable part that made Guyana poorer and impoverished many Guyanese families to the point of near starvation. Ours had become a retrogressive country that was going back in time on the fast track to Burnham era of dissolute squandermania and pro profligacy. With coalition leaders and elites becoming overnight millionaires while the people of the nation were reeling from an inept self-serving administration construct that had no developmental model on which to create synergies for economic growth to consequence social development. Mr. Speaker, including among the multiplicity of their retrogressive actions of whistle sourcing of contracts, bypassing the national tender boards, splitting up contracts worth millions of dollars, the underhand dealings of, of an infamous minister of the drug bond, which turned out to be not really a bond, Millions were misappropriated from poor people to build the white elephants that is now home to rats, rodents, and vagrants. Your legacy, their legacy, Mr. Speaker, the Durban Park, and give fat cat salary increases and unlimited benefit packages to the ministers and special persons who were assigned to sinecure positions considerably bloating this public service spending with nothing for genuine public servants. Today, Mr. Speaker, the great pretenders are agitating for public servants' rights, wanting to crucify the goose that is laying the financial golden egg 
with belated devious pretend concern for public servants because public servants are one of their support bases and they are laying the groundwork for the next elections, but their traditional supporters should heed the adage, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Well, Mr. Speaker, they have been fooling their supporters for decades. With the race card and violent destruction and mayhem, their primary electioneering tools, and yes, let us not forget their undelivered promises to the electorate. The infamy of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, support for very corrupt, for very corrupt level of lawlessness and prorogation of destructive, deconstructive, anti-national, unpatriotic concern of indelibly stamped into our historical records. Mr. Speaker, the people of Guyana will never ever make the mistake of supporting the coalition cabal again. They remember the CSOs. And uh, when I say they, Mr. Speaker, I'm not including you. They remember the CSOs and firing up over 1972 hardworking Amerindian youths, as well as other indigenous villagers who were finally doing progressive things with their lives. In 2015, Mr. Speaker, I saw the tears of young people and even adults, I felt the anguish and pain of many of my Amerindian brothers and sisters as the PNC led whirlwind swept its destructive path across the entire country with hinterland communities disastrously hard hit. After that, Mr. Speaker, Amerindians realized that it was a dreadful mistake to vote for the APNU AFC coalition government. Now in con contrast that with the PPPC record in office of just 18 months, we have re-employed 500 CSOs in 2020, then 2000 in 2021. And this year we are going to hire an additional 500 CSOs. Yes. These are young, bright and brilliant young Amerindians who are eagerly helping the various village economies. Mr. Speaker, this marks an injection of $720 million to $1.50 billion in just 18 months of the PPPC governance. Mr. Speaker, using Amerindians, just to give you an example of our job trust and focus as adumbrated in budget 2022, this budget has measures which guarantee thousands of jobs for our people. Mr. Speaker, budget 2022 in consideration, the job boom that will be created in the oil and gas sectors following the passage of the Local Content Act in this August Assembly. While Amerindians were suffering under the previous AP and UFC administration, they entertained their friends, families, cronies and financiers at lavish parties at Georgetown Club, State House, luxurious hotel, executive accommodations, and the private re residence of APNU AFC ministers. Mr. Speaker, I would describe everything that the APNU AFC coalition did from 2015 to 2020 August as a slight against the people who they, who they thought did not vote for them for the APNU AFC politicians, especially the Amerindians and the sugar workers. Even though it was sugar workers' votes that propelled them into government, the Honorable Ram Jatan admitted in this August House that their perception is that the PPPC government was to save the sugar industry because they were your people, meaning majority voted for the PPPC. Mr. Speaker, the land titling project was slighted by the venomous opposition sitting on that side of the house. Not one single community in the Amerindian and hinterland regions got through with their titling under the APNU ALC administration. Mr. Speaker, they stalled and complicated the process, but kept promising those Amerindians that, that they would get through if they continue voting for them. Amerindians said, never again, and today under the PPPC, 
two communities are titled and some two more are slated to be completed by February in this year, in 18 months. That's the progress and urgency attached to Amerindian development by the current PPPC government. Mr. Speaker, budget 2022 has allotted close to 561 million for the land titling program. Our Amerindian brothers and sisters will see 20 communities receiving titles this year. The APNUFC coalition must be disappointed and in disbelief that the PPPC government has delivered so much and will be incrementally delivering much more after just 18 months. Mr. Speaker, the opposition can win the dress all they want, but on this side of the house, we do not dress up with, with false promises in our approach to hinterland development. Amerindians are today fully involved in the governance and upgrading of our communities. The opposition utterances are based on optical illusions for the media and mentally myopic. Mr. Speaker, our people can see them for who they are, and they say never again, and your time will be spent in opposition forever. Mr. Speaker, when the APNUFC coalition government was in power, Amerindians were lo walking long distances and struggling to get by while they traveled, while the coalition ministers and their supporters traveled in style with planes and lux luxurious air-conditioned vehicles. Upon return to office, the PPPC government started to invest in transportation in all forms of in all firms, including trucks, tractors, boats, and ATVs for hinterland communities. Additional tractors and ATVs are budgeted this year so we can tend to, to village economies and assist our own grassroots development. Mr. Speaker, to promote Amerindian village agriculture, a sum of 411.2 million was allocated for additional Amerindian villages to benefit Budget 2022 caters for the improvement of hinterland roads to a tune of $3.4 billion. The Because We Care Cash Grant will see our hinterland and Amerindian students getting the amounts in Budget 2022 of $25,000 for a child and $5,000 whether you are from Dartmouth and Escobacos, whether you're from St. Cuthbert's Mission, whether you're from Boston, on the East Coast, or whether you're from the Rupununi, all school children will benefit. Everyone. Mr. Speaker, Amerindian Development Programs is $3.1 billion this year to further transform the lives of our Amerindians. Mr. Speaker, I stand as proud as Budget 2022 as I turn my attention to my geographic region, Upper Takatu, Upper Essequibo, Region 9, that I represent in this August House. Substance. I am proud to announce, Mr. Speaker, Region 9's budgetary allocation for 2022, a whopping 4.9 billion Guyana dollars. This budgetary allocation will bring changes to the lives of the people in Region 9, with the construction of a technical training center at a cost of 35 million, construction of a female dormitory at Sand Creek Secondary at a cost of 45 million, an extension of a Shelton Secondary dormitory, construction of a CPC training center at a cost of 28 million, the rehabilitation of Anna Secondary School at a cost of 25 million, construction of an infectious disease center at a cost of 25 million, construction of, of Kokshabai health post in South Pakaraimas at a cost of 14 million, construction of a primary school at Karbaikru in South Pakaraimas at a cost of 14 million. Mr. Speaker, and I can go on and on that, will, that are in the pipeline that will bring changes to the lives of our people in Region 9. Mr. Speaker, the theme of this year's budget is steadfast against all challenges, resolute in building our one Guyana. Mr. Speaker, I think the days of facing these challenges are struggling and struggling are soon going to come to an end. 
Once we confidently and resolutely support the PPPC's transformative visionary budgets. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2022 has unprecedented levels of intervention and financial support being provided to support every Guyanese child, man, and woman. Budget 2022 represents a strong force for the development of our country. Mr. Speaker, I have listened to the contributions of the opposition members who have spoken earlier on the budget. The opposition members do not have a clue or idea of budget 2022. The coalition opposition lacks basic comprehension and will never understand that budget 2022 will change and transform the lives of Guyanese across this land of many waters. The opposition members hate this budget so much because they understand that every PPPC government exposes their inept visionless mismanagement of the nation's economy. All sober-minded Guyanese know that the Co Guyanese coalition opposition is anti-development. Mr. Speaker, the founded principles in Budget 2022 are based on pursuing the well-being and lifestyle enhancement of every Guyanese. Budget 2022 puts the people at the center of our economic, social, cultural and environmental policies. National economic prosperity is meaningless if it does not provide the well-being of every Guyanese. Budget 2022 provides adequate levels of health care, education, water, housing and sanitation and ensures safety and security for all Guyanese. Honorable member, to ensure you can continue, you need to get an extension. Mr. Speaker, I would like to ask for five minutes more for the Honorable Member to conclude his presentation. Thank you, Honorable Member. You may continue to conclude. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Mahipal, for looking and listening. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2022 has special programs targeting women, children, the elderly, and other vulnerable groups in society that will be developed and implemented. Together with a vibrant, growing economy, with well-paying jobs, and the promotion, promotion of the well-being of all Guyanese in health, education and other areas. Budget 2022 also recognizes the need for promoting culture and sports and the importance of developing rounded personalities in our youth. Mr. Speaker, a robust, growing economy must support the development and improvement of the social sector. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2022 is progressive, people-oriented, and people-centered. Budget 2022 is full of a promise backed by the resilience of the oil and gas sectors. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2022 is a fiscal marker with a blueprint clearly outlined for good governance. One Guyana inclusive democracy and change towards the development trajectory. I commend, Mr. Speaker, Budget 2022 to this August Assembly and reiterate the confident prog prognostications of my fellow MPs on this side of the House when I say we will pass this budget despite the condemnation of the opposition. We will pass this budget, and I say it again and again, budget 2022 will pass for the people of Guyana. With this, Mr. Speaker, I thank you.